All right, welcome back to Vibus. And remember I mentioned about education and that we'll be looking into it a little bit more deeper. Yep. It's going to get exciting for kids out there because yeah. last year it was announced that coding would be incorporated into the Malaysian school syllabus mm -hmm. as part of the digital maker movement. Yeah. Now, the movement is uh, geared at improving digital literacy in schools and push the younger generation to become makers of technology mm -hmm. and not just users like what we are today, la, you know. The folks at uh, Rero and the Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation, MDAC, are collaborating as part of the Digital Maker Movement mm -hmm. and are launching a campaign that will train and empower teachers and student leaders uh, to introduce coding to 100 schools nationwide. And guess what? The schools enrolled in the campaign will get to adopt and train a robot. How cool is that? Yeah. Now, we're already fascinated and we can't wait to hear more from Cheryl Ng, uh, the Education Program Coordinator of the Rero team, about how they're bringing robotics to the masses. Hi, yeah. Cheryl. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, general perception yeah. about coding is that it's really hard. Like, mm. what is this? Or oh, coding means there's a lot of zeros and it's yeah. like, oh, no, I don't want to get into that. But based on your experience, what what sort of capacity do young minds kind of have for understanding coding and, and robotics as well? Well, first of all, if you think of coding as ones and zeros and sit a, a geek sitting in front of the computer, nah, nah, that's not the thing for <laughs> little children. I wouldn't agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an educator and a mother myself. Mm -hmm. And how I see coding is that, you know, at its simplest form, Learning to code is basically learning to talk or learning to communicate with machines, uh -huh. telling them what you want them to do and getting them to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I think it's not a problem. It's like learning a language. Mm -hmm. The younger you start, mm. the better you are at it. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, from my personal experience, uh, I have a son and he's turning four this okay. year and he basically grew up with Rero robots. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah? So uh, we never stop him from playing and exploring with the robots. Mm -hmm. And it, it just happens naturally, you see? Mm. Right. Um, young children, they are very inquisitive. Mm -hmm. They mm. want to know what this is, what that is, how it works. Yeah. So for us, we just tell him, you know, this is a robot, this is the controller, this is the robot's brain, okay. mm. this is the model, it makes the robots move, mm. and these are the sensors, and from there, he pick it up. Right, they become inquisitive in that sense. Yes, yeah. and recently, he was telling me, Mommy, can you make the robot sing? It, you know, he has songs from <laughs> favorite yeah. shows. So I said, yeah, why not? So basically, we, we just sat down mm. with him, and I show him, uh, so we, we are not using uh, all those ones and zeros. So for Rero, we have our own um, software mm -hmm. and we are using graphic okay. user interface. Okay. okay. So you basically you have all the icons and you just click what you need and drag to the programming canvas. So cool. Yeah. Oh. So I sat down together with mm. him. So we say, okay, when we start, we click this one has a play button, mm -hmm. start, you drag this here to the canvas, and then next, what do you want the robot to do? Okay. Okay, you want the robot to sing. Okay, fine, we drag this okay. module to make the robot sing. Basically make it ah. as simple as it can for the yeah. kid to understand, but you know, yeah. robots are going to be in schools, right? Yes. So that's the exciting thing. How does this upcoming campaign uh, actually uh, of introducing coding to schools uh, in a comprehensive uh, manner? Um, so basically, the first thing we need is to uh, give exposure to our young people. Mm. We want to give them the opportunity, yeah, to explore. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to conduct an introductory workshop, uh -huh. introduce the robotics kit to them, and how to, you know, use it and so on. Mm -hmm. And after the training, they are going to bring the set back with them to the school. Okay. That's yeah. when they are going to have fun, and the. Kit itself, it comes with a booklet, mm. and in the booklet we have ten coding lessons, okay. and we structure it in a way that it will help them to uh, learn on their own. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I, I come from it. I'm an educator. Ah, teacher. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a programmer. I'm not an engineer. I'm an educator at heart. Yeah. So when we plan the content, we plan it in such a way that you know the the learners they can gain the most out of it. Mm -hmm. So we, we want them to have a sense of achievement okay. as they progress through the lessons. Right. Mm -hmm. So we start with something simple and then we have guided 
uh, step by step. Mm. So they learn the steps, and once they have mastered it, you know, they get that sense, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Achievement, yeah. And then we throw them a challenge. An open-ended challenge, no textbook answer, mm. there's no right or wrong answer. We have this task for you to do. Tell your robot to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah? And then they go and explore. That's wow. where they come up with creative ways to mm. do it. Yeah. So from there, you have lesson one to ten to guide them step by step. And then mm. uh, in February, we are going to launch our monthly coding challenge. So in February, March, April and mm. May, there will be four coding challenges. Okay. And all these challenges will guide them towards the competition. Okay. Right, okay. Before we get yeah. into more about the program and what yeah. the competition is and stuff, why why did you choose to, you to use yeah. robots to introduce coding? Yeah, robots. It's cool. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, you see, in, in teacher training, we learned that, you know, uh, students, they go through different developmental stages. Mm. Yeah. When they are in primary school, they are not quite ready to, yeah. you know, think all those abstract. Yeah. You, you, you know, in like, detail, yeah. Yeah. When, when you program and if just you know just write the programs, mm. yeah. they sometimes they find it hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So when they have this tool with them, give them a robot, you know, yeah. they can. Ah, I want the robot to do this. So how do you do it? You write the program, you upload the program, and you see for yourself. Is it doing it right? Right. Mm. If it is not doing what you want it to do, yeah. then there's something wrong right. in your program. Right. You go back, go through it, yeah. and get them improve. thinking, right? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And I'm sure you've gone through a lot of you know a lot of challenges in, in trying to come up with this and trying to find a concept that works. Yeah. Uh, what can you take us through some of the challenges that, that you had to overcome in this process? Um, first of all, I'm I'm not from a uh, technical background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have to work hand in hand with uh, the engineers. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a cool thing about this product. It's hundred percent designed and manufactured in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So I get to work alongside the core design team. Right. Okay. So I can actually go into there and ask them, why is it that you really want to achieve when you were developing this product? Mm -hmm. Why is it that you want them to learn? What can they learn from this? Yeah. So we engage in a lot of communication. Ah. Thing, da, 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 da. And, and basically we just list out what are the content, what are the skills that students mm. need to know and basically to uh, prepare them, nurture them so that they begin to right. think like an engineer. Okay. Right. But yeah. what exactly do these participants have to do uh, you know, uh, when they train the robots? What, what, what exactly are they doing? Uh, you mean for the competition? Yeah, for the for the robots. When the robot, for the robots. Yeah. Okay. Um, a robot. Do you think a robot is clever or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, all robots are geniuses. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> made by humans. <laughs> who are geniuses. No. Um, a robot is like a a blank slate. Uh, like a, a a child. You know, when they are little kids, yeah. they don't know anything. You have to teach them, and you actually have to go into a lot of details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To get a robot to, let's say, pick up something mm. from one place and serve the food to okay. guests, for example, you cannot just say, robot, serve uh, Ruben or serve Juanita. Yeah. That, that doesn't happen. It doesn't work like that, right? Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. You have to break down the task mm -hmm. into logical, smaller steps okay. that the the robot can understand. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if I were to tell someone to serve drinks to Rupert, I'll just say, serve the drink to Rupert. But to program a robot, you have to break down the task. Yeah. First, pick up the glass. Okay. Move from point A to point B, where mm. Rupert is. And you have to remember, along the way, you have to tell the robot, you have to detect if there is obstacle along the way, you have to move to the side yeah a lot of a lot of uh, minor, steps. minor yeah. details that need to be put yeah right. like given attention in that sense huh? yes mm. wow so basically when they are programming the robots mm. they have to first of all think what is it that they want to achieve and then they have to break down the task and this is uh, what we call a computational thinking mm. it is a, a computational thinking it is a skill that is uh, 
becoming increasingly important. Mm. Basically, the whole idea is to uh, break down a complex task mm -hmm. into smaller steps. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, how how will this um, this training with the robot and, and teaching the robot what to do, programming the robot, yes. tie in with the with the competition and the the challenge that, that you will throw in yeah. in between? Okay. Um, for the competition, for the competition, yeah. they have to um, program the robot to mm. autonomously uh, navigate the game field. Yeah. So, meaning the robot will have to move. Uh, follow the lines, so they have to program the line sensor. Mm, mm. Okay. The robots will follow the lines, and then it's going to collect cylinders, mm -hmm. and then so the cylinders have numbers printed on them. Mm -hmm. And they have to collect all those cylinders, and using right. the numbers, they are going to form equations that equate to a solution number that mm. is generated randomly at the beginning of the game. Right. right. So yeah. can these robots do anything you want them to do or can they do as much as you've kind of already preset them to, to achieve the mm. tasks that you've preset yes. already so that they choose choose yes. from? Okay. The robots can oh, it's only already preset. Okay. No. The robots can only do what you have programmed it to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So basically the participants they will have to think okay. how to best achieve the result that they want. Mm. Okay. For example, the game field is just a simple grid mm -hmm. right. with the cylinders spread out, right? Yeah. They have to think about the, um, you know, the best way to collect as many cylinders as possible. Mm. Mm -hmm. The best route. They have to think of all the algorithm and all that. They have to figure it out for right. themselves. So basically, the coding challenges okay. is to guide them towards that task. Okay, very quickly, you're a teacher yourself, right? Yes. So, you know, your teachers in school are thinking, oh uh, my god. Uh, previously. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, uh, in, in the yeah. past, right? So, teachers at school be thinking, oh my god, this is this is going to be complicated to us too. It's like coding and robotics, what is this? Um, th is there specific training given to these teachers in order to be able to understand it before they even teach the kids? Mm. This is where I'm going to tell all the teachers, no worries. If I can do it, I'm sure you can. <laughs> okay. I'm, I used to be a language teacher with mm. zero technical skill. Right. It was like totally, mm, oh. Okay. <laughs> but it, it, it all happened. You know, I, I, I was at home one day and then with the, the, the kid right. is there and I was like, oh, I'll just give it a try. Okay. And I followed the, the venue and mm. I built my first robot. Wow. And then when I did it, when it moved, I was like, wow. I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. This when I, impossible. La. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's it's very easy because uh, when we develop the content, the syllabus for this, mm -hmm. we are targeting young children. Mm. Yeah. And we want to set it in a way that you know they can just follow and then learn. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure it's not a problem for yeah. teachers to do Definitely. it. Exactly. Yeah. So you're reaching out to teachers, you're reaching out to the key students that yes. the, the schools will um, also teach, right? Yes. And they, they will pick out the students from the, each school. Mm -hmm. But how do you support their, their progress along the way, especially mm. if they come across problems that you know they can't they can't find a solution to? Maybe do you kind of check in with the teams yeah. or are they do they reach out to you? How does that work? Yeah, we we always keep open communication with all our teachers and students. Okay. They they contact us by WhatsApp all hours. Okay. Yeah. And there's always uh, they can always go to the uh, our e-learning portal. We have an mm. online learning portal for okay. the uh, students. Mm -hmm. So they can chat there, uh, chat with other participants as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And of course uh, we will visit the schools. Uh -huh. Yeah. So after the, the one off training, we give them time to explore on their own. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere in between the training and the competition, we will drop by the school to visit uh -huh. the team. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if they have any problems, any difficulties, okay. we are there to assist them. Yeah. Okay. yeah. How many schools now have you reached out to so far? Um, we are targeting 100 schools. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so far, we already have over 40 registered. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that's Fantastic. 40 robots going to 40 schools for sure. <laughs> yes. Right. But you know, but what kind of, what are the criteria that has to be met by these schools in the first place in order to be able to, to receive be, a to robot? To join this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, very simple. Number one, uh, we need support from the principal. This is very important. Like we, we have conducted programs with many schools. We need support from mm. the principal and the admin. Yeah. Because 
when they support, then they will give the teachers okay. the, the support that is needed. Right. And on the teacher's part, we need a teacher who is willing. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. you know, this is this is something fun. Like we want to uh, recruit teachers who who see the benefit, mm. how this is going to help their students, yep. who is passionate to. Mm. Of course, this will be extra work for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but is it, does it fall under academic or curriculum? Uh, co curriculum. Okay. Yeah. So we, we are hoping to reach out to teachers who are willing to yeah. take this up, take up this project, mm -hmm. and actually. Uh, spend time learning together with uh -huh. their students. Okay. Right. Yeah. Lots of dedication Great. as well. Yeah. A lot of dedication. So if, if there are teachers or maybe students who want to encourage their teachers to, to sign up for this, where do we get more information? Yeah. yeah. Um, can go to our info page for this program, mm -hmm. www.reroll.io slash news slash 35. With all the information yeah. and any problem, any questions, they can always uh, email yeah. Yeah. or WhatsApp me. Yeah. That's great. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl. Can we can we get the robot if yeah, it's we not just, in the school program? Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it read my mind, Juanita. Yeah, could we by any chance? <laughs> um, we'll think about it. <laughs> no pressure, Cheryl. <laughs> Become just a kidding. teacher first, yes, then you can yes. get the robot. <laughs> Very true. No, thank you so yeah. much for sh uh, coming and sharing everything. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And for doing what you do. I think this is fantastic and yeah. it's new. It's never been done before, coding to students. So, yeah, yeah that's just, this is a future future of our generation. Very exciting. I'm just imagining kids out there who are watching by their moms or their dads at, yeah. this, at this very moment thinking like, oh my god, mom, I hope I'm that school. I mean that school that gets one of those robots. Yeah, that's why you can tell your teacher about it and, you know, go and sign up for the program exactly. and get yourself a robot. Right, let's just remind you, tomorrow in Viva is what's yeah. going to be happening is reliability is a valuable trait that uh, most employees appreciate and we'll be discussing why we need to be reliable employees mm -hmm. with Shankar Sandiram who joins us to continue his series uh, that will get you on the path to that promotion Yes, we'll be also joined by Yudesh Shaska, a jack of several trades in entrepreneurship, to find out more about his experience in the world of business. And all you burger lovers are going to want to stay Ooh. tuned as we join Roshan and Juanita at My Burger Lab on V Eats. I'm, I've been wanting oh to go gosh. to that place. You know, we ate so much, we couldn't even yeah. walk after that. I, I like but... that burger with his, that, that brown pet, that, you know. The charcoal bun. bun. Yeah, that's a charcoal bun. <laughs> charcoal bun. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to love tomorrow's show then. But as Can't always, wait. keep writing to us at vbuzz at astro.com.my. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at vbuzz underscore hd. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. I'm Juanita. My name is Ruben. It's bye-bye for now. See you tomorrow.